Have a good day. Thanks for joining us here. Okay, guys, welcome back to Between Bells. Audio Boom is a global on-demand podcasting platform that hosts nearly 2,800 active channels. Wow. Yes, that's a lot. The podcasting service has over 60 million listens per month and just struck partnerships with Spike TV and iHeartRadio. Here to tell us more about Audio Boom is COO Stuart Last. Stuart, thanks for joining us thanks today. Thanks for having me. I walk past here every day looking on you guys, so it's good to come in and, and hang like, out. And you're like, finally you're inside this yeah. part. Now you're yeah. reversing all of this. Yes. Well, thanks for, for being here finally in our little bubble, our little fishbowl here. Okay, so your company's been dubbed the Twitter for audio. So break that down for us. What does that mean? Yeah, I think that's how the company started out mm -hmm. as, a, as Twitter for audio. The, the idea was that you would uh, record short 30 second pieces of audio on your phone. You'd then share them with your, your social um, network. But, but really what happened uh, maybe four years ago, some journalists from the Guardian newspaper uh, in the UK were using our mobile app to do exactly that, record short pieces on the ground in Syria and Libya during the uprisings there. Mm -hmm. They could then push that audio back to the home page of The Guardian, making it instantly available, getting outside the news cycle. Um, and it really kind of uh, helped the company develop a kind of a professional tool set for the broadcast and the, the publishing industry. So at that point, we kind of removed the, the 30 second limit. Um, we expanded out so people could record full length podcasts, full length radio shows, make them available on demand, get them instantly out to an audience. Um, and since then, we've kind of grown those relationships with, with big big broadcast companies who really want to get into podcasting. Sure. Podcasting yeah. is exploding mm -hmm. um, and is professionalizing every single day. Um, yeah. And so we now work with companies like NBC Sports, with Associated Press, uh, with Univision, these huge global media companies who want to get into podcasting. We work with those guys mm -hmm. now. And you mentioned you know, the, the rise and the explosion of podcasts. It seems like just over the course of the last like five to 10 years, you know, like the importance of podcasts and how people are listening to them all the time. What do you think caused that? Why do you think we there's this rise of interest in podcasts? So, I, I mean, I th you know, podcasts have been around over 10 years. Um, most people have, have got into podcasting since Serial in mm -hmm. 2014. But really, the, the industry was professionalizing a couple of years before that. Yeah. Before that, we, you know, it was enthusiast level creators, maybe at home with a microphone, recording podcasts about the the topics they were into. Low low cost barrier of entry, they could really just record on their home computer, and with technology, spread that podcast out. Like I say, things are professionalizing. Companies see. Um, this is a way to get to a new audience. The podcast audience is a millennial audience. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's, it has between 15 and 34 year olds. Podcasting has a 13% share of ear. Mm -hmm. And that's, you know, that includes everything. That includes listening to, to uh, music at home, to Spotify, to radio, mm -hmm. to streaming radio. Um, and so it's a really solid audience for, for millennials. Millennials love podcasting. And for traditional media companies, whether that's the New York Times or the Washington Post, those guys need to connect to that young audience, and podcasting is a great way to do that. For and that's them. why we've seen a lot of companies like the New York Times and the Associated Press really get yeah. into podcasting recently. Those guys are stepping in, and they all have formed very strong strategies about where they want to take podcasting in the future. So, yeah, the, 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 the industry is looking good. It was a $190 million industry in the U.S. last year. It's growing 25% year on year. It's going to be a half billion dollar industry by 2020. Wow, okay, so Associated Press, NBC Sports, BBC, but you have a new partnership with Spike TV we want to talk about. How did that come about and what does this look like? Yeah, the, the Spike TV is, is a fantastic kind of step to, for us into content creation. Mm -hmm. Audio Boom to, to this point really has been a, a podcast services company. We've done, we've been an end-to-end -end solution for podcasters. They use our technology to host and distribute their content. We then do the advertising sales uh, and the monetization piece for them. Um, the third part to podcasting is, is to be a content creator, right? Mm -hmm. So one of our, our steps into that as well as to create an original content art is to work closely uh, with other companies to create branded content, essentially. So Spike, were, um, Spike have a great uh, new TV season um, around Khalif Browder. Um, this guy was um, kind of wrongly convicted, put in Rikers Island, spent three years there, came out um, and sadly committed suicide um, a, a year or so later. And Jay-Z and the Weinstein Company have done a, a great series for Spike TV. Um, again, they wanted to get that messaging out about that show to a, a, a young millennial audience. Um, they came to us. We were able to identify uh, three big true crime shows that we have on Audio Boom with audiences uh, well over a million 
listeners per episode. And so we worked with those podcasters to create uh, a really strong set of, of podcasts to cover the Khalif Browder story and the work that Spike and Jay-Z mm -hmm. and, and the Weinstein company were doing. So that's been a big success for us. So you just time. mentioned Spike TV, iHeartRadio. We've seen a, a gradual decline of, of listening to radio, traditional, regular radi radio, which iHeartRadio owns radio stations across the country. And they've really been focusing more on a lot of their podcast stuff. Um, and so what are you guys doing with iHeartRadio? Is this more like... Is this more like uh, radio host kind of uh, stuff that they do across the country, or is this music-related things? This is um, this is a distribution opportunity for us, really. So I have 95 million monthly users, um, and until this point iTunes has, has been the dominant platform for podcast listening. Everyone goes to iTunes. That's where they find and mm -hmm. listen to, to their podcasts. Um, iHeart have, have kind of recognized that, and they, they feel that they um, can can be a competitor for uh -huh. iTunes. So um, we've struck a distribution deal with them. All of the, the podcasts, uh, the thousands of podcasts that we work with will now be available uh, in iHeartRadio on demand anytime that, that you want, um, which is great for our podcasters because it gets them to a wider audience, right. uh, grows their advertising sales, but also there's, there's a kind of uh, discovery opportunity there as well because, uh -huh. again, discovery of podcasts has been tough to this point. It's been a word of mouth thing. Uh, with iHeart, we are able to um, record 30-second promotions for our podcasts. They will then run those promotions within their music streams or their radio streams to drive audience across to the podcast. Which I think is smart. That's always yeah. been the biggest criticism, at least from my perspective with podcasts, is there's just so many of them that it literally takes something word of mouth that you see it in a newspaper or friends like you have to listen to this I use like the podcast. generated lists. I try and like figure out well, what yeah, the top but, ones yeah. are in the category. But they're still very there's, oversaturated. Yeah, and there might be things that you're missing all the time, so it's good that you guys are doing promotions for it all the time. Stuart, yeah. thank you so much for joining us today. We have to no tell problem. you our audience thinks you look like Chris Martin from Coldplay. Yeah, I get that a few times. That's a good one. <laughs> and sound like him, too. Yes. And, <laughs> We're uh, not going to make you sing today. Um, if you guys ever want to do a podcast, you know where to find us. It's perfect for your audience. Yes. We should do yes. something together. Definitely. Yes. Stuart Lassio of Audio Boom, thank you for joining us. Coming up on Between Bells, the coolest new plans for autonomous vehicles. But first, graffiti artist who motivates entrepreneurs with his paintbrush. Take a look.